must at all costs be maintained. It's probably... Yes, but basically what, what the thing says is whatever happens at night, by the time the park opens, it better look the way it's always looked. And it's probably the one thing that has kept all of this from being a much worse than it would have otherwise been. Because no group wants to be the group to break that and close down the park and kill the power for everyone. Yep. Yeah, I mean, if you if you think about the confluence of power that is hitting in this place, and what would happen if it shut down the banality and even for the other groups, the, the loss of power, you know, that would occur if this place fell. Exactly, yeah. Um, you've been given to believe they are. <laughs> yeah, a lot of the security guards. Mm -hmm. Well, not a list of all of them, but um, they're usually quite noticeable. Well, they're usually the ones giving people bloodthirsty looks if they would like to cut their heads off rather than allow them into the parks. Uh, there are a good number here within the uh, uh, the resorts. Uh, it's an ideal place for um, those few kindred that uh, still struggle to give out sunlight completely. Uh, obviously many of the uh, characters allow for movement in sunlight without any exposure. <laughs> oh, of course, yes. Uh, the, the, the Fae have always been very prevalent in the parks. I mean, obviously, with this much, um, well, this much wonder and dream around, how could you expect it to be any other way? The, the Fae and the Magi tend to, uh, harvest quite heavily of the, of the guests. More, more, uh, more of your kind, you say. Mm -hmm. Oh, please, we... You think we would invite you into our club without knowing exactly who and what you are? We know that you have been sent by the 
east uh, by the west western coast court um, what we would like to know and what I'm sure my sister will eventually get around to discussing is at what point you will declare your court here defunct and allow us to finally move into the castle Well, there is no dinner table. There, are, there are a, there are a few tables, and there is a long table of hors d'oeuvres and uh, like buffet style snacks. The little plastic sword. <laughs> yeah, you do find that most of the food here is, is fairly normal, but maybe prepared in odd ways. Uh, but there are a few things that are definitely not normal. Exactly right, yeah. Yeah, it's... Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's happened more than once. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, you can also go back to Sweeney Todd. Well, no, that Sweeney Todd was actually based on events that, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, but where where were we before we were distracted? Now you were kind of you oh, you you found out that they know that you're changelings, and she basically. Told you about the the uh, the castle. She she kind of smiled and she said, "Please, the most exclusive places in the parks, uh, all except for the castle, are already ours. It's simply the piece de resistance for us." Basically, that's the impression that you get, yes. Yeah, you get the impression that appearance means a lot to these people. Yeah. Power and the appearance of power are both very alluring. But it's better to have power than you don't have to fake it. Um, quite pale, yes. Pale, but not as pale.
she 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 kind of gives you a look of mock uh, shock and, and scoffs a bit and she says now now that is quite the personal question She, she leans in and she whispers to you and she says, I'll tell you the answer to your question if you'll answer one of mine first. Tell me, which of you is of noble blood? No, you're not. You've all kind of broken off on your own at this point. You're not all together. couple. Our information was uh, that the group that was being uh, sent to, to the area included only one noble. Ah, uh, well, no, 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 no. I mean, your, um, your ranking noble, your, your leader. You would have, yes. Well, I mean, you, you would have known it from previous. Mm-hmm. Okay, uh, du Duke Lehon, you mean? Oh, yeah. Duke Renshaw Leon is the specifics. Then how would you then how would he tell them? So you give you give her the the duke's name. You have a you have a duke traveling with you. Yeah. 
Yeah. Th this conversation kind of continues on for a while without really going anywhere. Um, but you're, you're, you're probing for information. She's probing for information. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, and a while passes before uh, Artessa um, kind of steps out into the middle of the room, uh, kind of taps her, her, her crystal glass uh, to kind of draw everyone's attention. And, and then she kind of begins a, like a, a, a welcome speech uh, to her new friends, uh, newly arrived from the... Uh, East coast, uh, from the west coast, rather, um, and you know, wishing you luck on all of your endeavors with it, uh, here in the park, um, and just kind of a fairly bog standard uh, host welcoming new people thing. Yes, you get the idea that this is kind of something that she does a lot. Yeah. <laughs> what's your um, what's your gray mare score uh, Charles mm-hmm Um, probably. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that that's going to be the only reason you know something of them, but you don't know a huge amount. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know they're vampires and you know they're involved in the organ trade. That's pretty much what you would know for sure about them. Yes, and they usually have a lot of money. Uh, Jack, you would actually know a little bit more. Um, but still not a great deal of specifics, just because it's not really been a focus of study. Yep, and um, after the speech is concluded, that is when Artessa kind of moves um, towards the, the, the group of you uh, and, and kind of speaks out and she says, Now, I, I, I do hate to interrupt the, the evening, but there are a few matters which I would like to discuss with your leader, if at all possible. She's kind of addressing all of you at this point, yeah.
Um, so she, uh, Artessa does turn and, and smile at, uh, you, Dwight, and she says, please, would you join me for a drink? <laughs> and, and Helena kind of smiles. Helena kind of smiles and pats your arm and says, I'll fetch us all another drink. Uh, certainly. Uh, manipulation, persuasion. Okay, Charisma Persuasion. Uh, between sessions, or at the very least between scenes, not mid-scene. If, if, we, if we have a point where we say, you know, you're going to head off, you're going to go to bed, you're going to sleep through the night, whatever, at that point I would be fine with it, but not mid-scene. Uh, four successes. Yeah, you definitely are getting on well with her. Uh, let me roll her To see how much uh, she like, uh, how much you like her. But you still like her quite a bit. She she really does seem to be into kind of, um, maybe not so much. You're having to educate her on Celtic punk rock, uh, but the the but the American uh, the American punk rock scene she's very big on. Um, she does say that she used to play bass a little bit, but she hasn't really done it in years. Um, but yeah, she she really is big on on punk rock and. Uh, she actually has mentioned a couple clubs at uh, Disney Springs that she would love to take you to one evening. Uh, yeah, you're, you're, the two of you are hitting it off very well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Um, so, Taylor, Dwight and Artessa head over to one of the tables on the, on the side, and as she sits down, she looks at you and she says, I do hate to spoil the mood, so I will be very brief. Um, we are aware that the... Fay, who maintained uh, residence in the castle, have departed. We would like to know. Uh, we would like to know if you have been sent from the west coast to take ownership or to discuss leveraging a new owner. For the castle. I 
see. Uh, we would, of course, be very interested in compensating you for the location. She doesn't know that. Um, she kind of, she kind of nods as you say that, <laughs> she kind of nods as you say that, and uh, she says, I see, well, if there is anything we can do to assist, uh, we would be happy to do so. Um, if, if we are not here, we can often be found uh, at the upper levels of the Grand Floridian where we make our residence. No, you're at the Contemporary. Yes. Yes. Yeah, if you kind of look, this is a very small image because I've snapped it from something larger. Uh, but if you look at that image, the map of the kind of full resort. Here, I'll show you. Um, no, it's not. Um, the if you look if you look there, that shows you all of the other parks and where they are as well. Um, if you look though where the castle is, that is the Magic Kingdom. Um, Epcot and Hollywood and uh, Animal Kingdom are all down further south, but around that lake surrounding uh, the Magic Kingdom, the red roofs is the Grand Floridian, the brown roofs to the south is the Polynesian, uh, and then the other smaller bit of, of brown to the southeast is the Wilderness Lodge, and then the kind of odd A-frame building uh, to the far east is the contemporary where you're staying. And you can see that there is a silver line that goes through all of those. The monorail goes around that lake to all of those locations and then back to the park. Yeah. Those hotels are pretty much for the park. Well, all, yeah, all of, even the hotels down like south of Epcot are all pretty much for the park as well. This entire thing, everything on this map, is owned by Disney. Uh, so if you look where the giant kind of golf ball is, that's Epcot. To the east and south of there, there's a, there's more hotels, more resorts, and then that area down to the south of there that's got the big boat, the white tower, the ball thing, that's Disney Springs. That's like a massive shopping village that's all Disney as well. That's also where the nightclubs and things are. Yep. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, so right now, all you're, all you're looking at when you look at the park map is just the Magic Kingdom. Just that northernmost part. There's three other amusement parks plus two water parks. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, yeah, there's a lot of stuff going on here. Yeah. Yeah. It's a big place. But, um, 
basically, yeah, she's she spends the next half hour or so kind of whining and dining you for the most part, basically making it clear that um, they're prepared to offer. Yeah, they're they're basically prepared to make an offer for ownership of the castle, uh, whether that be monetary or um, trade or um, alliances, services. Um, yeah. Um, roll me intelligence and uh, lore. Or, or, or I'll also accept it intelligence politics. Uh, seven. <laughs> uh, I'll make it a six for you. One success. You do know that they're. Mm hmm. Uh, you do know that there have been times that the castle has not been controlled by changelings, but you don't know offhand the specifics of who controlled it at those times. Yeah. You know that it's happened, but you don't know the story behind it. Well, yeah, it's, yeah. Uh, Madman, this girl that you that uh, you're with, um, who is Amber, yeah, you two are getting on really well. Um, she is into a lot of the same things you are: music and um, just you're really hitting it off. And she kind of laughs and she says, oh, it's amazing. I mean, just think about it. Young forever. You know, everyone just loves to do what you say. And if they don't, you eat them. It's, how could it be better? <laughs> yeah. And she actually starts talking, and um, she's talking. She's talking to you about a concert that she attended. That was like a monumental kind of birth of punk rock kind of concert that you know happened in like the early seventies. This girl looks about twenty three, twenty four. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and she was there. Um, yeah, and, and that's pretty much your evening there. <laughs> Yeah, brilliant. And she actually uh, provides you with one as well. That actually lists her. Um, I mean, by, by name, 
but lists her as a uh, a vacation consultant for for the Disney Vacation Club. It actually lists her as uh, as a regional VP. Um, yeah. Um, yeah, so, Doc, how are you spending your evening with, um, Constance? Okay, she, she starts to realize you're, you're a bit bored with kind of the, the party talk and decides that she's going to instead try to cheer you up a bit with a, a skill demonstration and she actually starts showing off to you her uh, knife juggling uh, and she actually brings out a um, basically a dartboard but for throwing knives and, and challenges you to a competition uh huh. Yeah. All right. <laughs> so it's going to be three rolls, one for each dagger you're throwing, and it is dexterity and melee. Actually, no, sorry, it's not melee because you're throwing them. So it's dexterity athletics. No, because we're still during the, the evening. It would be the end of this evening, really. Okay. Okay. All right. She throws the first one. Four successes. She, uh, nearly skewers the bullseye just just outside of it you you hit the you hit the board but it's kind of in the outer ring area yeah uh, she throws again and she hits about the same area that you hit on your first throw Looks a little bit annoyed with that. You hit closer in than her uh, her last hit, but not as close as her first one. And then she's going to spend willpower on this last one. That's not right. Mm. And then she gets another kind of shot on the board, but not not perfect. So four, five, six, seven, and you had two, three, four, five, six, seven. It's a tie after three. So <laughs> so one more. And she's going. Mm -hmm. Ooh. And she's kind of grinning at you at this point. No, no, that her. Yeah, her willpower is already added. Yes, yeah, so you win just barely. You you just cut the dagger inside hers. 
Um, and she kind of looks at you and she smiles and nods and says, You're very good. I like that. I do too, but losing to someone and it being a good show is almost as good. At which point she kind of orders you each another drink and, um, I mean, she starts talking to you at that point a bit more about, less about kind of general party chat and things like weapon techniques and things that you're a lot more interested in, yeah. Well, you have Artessa and um, and Helena there at the moment. Yeah, and you are kind of talking. Yeah, you're yeah you're talking politics with them. Uh, I would say in this case it would be wits politics. Because you're talking off the cuff, not... Okay, roll it. Difficulty 7. Okay. Yeah, I mean, you're having a very good conversation with them. And... Unless you do something very out of the ordinary, you all have very enjoyable evenings, and sometime around an hour before dawn, uh, the party seems to kind of be wrapping up to a close. Yeah, well, I mean, you, you've... Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, you're, you're well past closing hours of the park at this point. Uh, speaking uh, of uh, Colin, though, um, Amber does tell you that she has quite an extensive uh, record collection. Uh, but that perhaps that would be more appropriate for a second date. Uh, and she does give you her, her cell phone number. <laughs> uh, and an hour before dawn, um, you, they they do have uh, someone come around and uh, basically escort you out of the park because obviously the park's closed. So um, yeah, you as you're heading towards the exit to the park, you do notice that there are a few people around. A few of them look like maintenance people. But then there are also a couple of people that are just walking down Main Street that look like they're, um, they look like they're, you know, park guests. They're snapping selfies of themselves and, and kind of laughing as they head down the street, getting pictures of the castle. No, the park closed at 2 a.m. No, they're not. Mm-hmm. 
Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, definitely. Through no, through through your uncle. Everything is to go through your uncle. Okay, are you calling him or are you texting him? Email, okay. Yeah, well, uh, technically early. Okay. There is also a time difference from where you are and where he is, so. Mm -hmm. Five hours? Mm, yeah. Well, it's like it's like five a.m. for you, or four at four a.m. for you. Oh, okay. So if it's yeah, it's one o'clock in the morning for him. Okay. Got it. That's what she sends you back. And you head back to your rooms and I assume go to sleep? So, <coughs> uh, Doc, you said you wake up about noon, do your exercises, things like that. And the rest of you are still sleeping? Mm. Shortly after, uh, sorry, shortly before one o'clock. Jack, you you feel it first because you're awake. You're standing on the the terrace outside of your room, 
uh, which, by the way, you can actually look out and see the castle from the terrace of your room, um, where, where, where you're actually positioned in the hotel. Um, you're doing your exercises, and you feel a wave of glamour hit you like you have never felt before. Um, it feels like you've just stepped through a fey trod into the dreaming, only much more intense. Uh, you immediately gain three glamour. You lose one banality. And you feel invigorated. Uh, all of the rest of you are awakened and feel that, yes. This is, this is temporary glamour, it's not permanent glamour. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, so your your permanent glamour should be your your permanent glamour should be marked as dots. Your temporary glamour should be marked uh, as the squares beneath the dots. Yes. You lose you lose a permanent banality. Yeah, t ten permanent glamour or zero permanent banality will both pull you into the dreaming. This is why I did point out in the game that things like your occupations and your normal human lives will become important in this game because those are sources of banality that will keep you focused on this world. <laughs> so all of the rest of you awaken with this feeling like the air is buzzing with glamour. Mm -hmm. uh, that was temporary as well. Yeah, it feels great when you wake up. Um, Jack, because you're outside, roll me perception uh, alertness. Damn. Um, as you as you look out uh, across where the, the park is and all of that, as you kind of lift your head up and, and, and give that roar you realize that the castle that you're looking at now is much bigger than it was. It looks it looks like you're actually looking at the Chimeric Castle in the center of the park. Not only that, not only that, but as you're glancing around the park, because you got so many successes, you actually see, as you're looking up, um, towards the back of, of Fantasyland, where 
you know that yesterday you kind of passed by and you saw the Dumbo the Flying Elephants ride? And I'm sure that, uh, Doc, you've seen it before. It kind of goes in a circle and the elephants go up and down. As you actually see these elephants circling the castle. Uh, yes. Well, you're in the same room. Mm, you probably have a better idea. Yeah, I'll let you roll for it. You wouldn't automatically know it. Uh, intelligence, Graymere. Uh, it would be a much higher difficulty with Kenning. Now uh, with Grey Mirror, it's going to be a five. An eight. Hmm. Okay. Um, Dwight, you look out the window and you kind of think you might have an idea what's going on. Um... Yeah, you have a suspicion. Jack, you're pretty sure you know what's happening, but you've got no idea how or why it could happen. But something has brought down the Curtain of the Mists. Yeah. Well, no, I mean, the, all changelings are fairly intimately acquainted with the mists and the fact that they protect the changelings from mortals seeing them um yeah so yeah somehow or another you are looking out and seeing that the um the chimerical has become reality this means that this means that basically to use the, the grim term everyone would see you as vogued Everyone 